Number one. Listen to a teacher. Please give me your homework from yesterday. What did the teacher tell the students to do? Number two. Listen to a doctor. Your mother told me that you like to read a lot. That's great. But you also need to exercise and play outside. Running and playing are important for staying healthy and not getting sick. What did the doctor tell the boy to do? Number three. Listen to a father talking to his daughter. It is cold outside. Don't forget to wear a coat to school today. What did the father tell his daughter to do? Number four. Listen to a teacher. Today we are going to play a new game. Everyone, please get a ball from the basket. What did the teacher tell the students to do? Number five. Listen to a mother. Ariana and Augustus, it's time to stop. You played in the garden all day. Come inside now so you can eat. What did the mother tell her children to do? Number six. Listen to a mother. Tom, could you go to the grocery store and buy me some milk? I need it as soon as possible, so come straight home from the store. Don't stop at the park or hang out with your friends. What did the mother tell the boy to do? Number 7. Listen to a mother. Anne, your music teacher just called to tell me that he can't come today, so you can go swimming with your brother. Don't forget to bring your pink swimsuit. What did the mother tell the girl to do? Number 8. Listen to a mother. Kathy, your baby sister is sleeping. Don't bounce the ball inside the house. If you really want to play, please bring it outside. Be careful when walking downstairs while holding the ball. What did the mother tell the girl to do? Number 9. Listen to a conversation between two students on the playground. Listen for the answer to this question. What does the boy want to do? It's really hot today. Yeah, it's too hot to play. I wish I had some money. What do you need money for? I want to buy some ice cream. What does the boy want to do? A. Play. B. Go home. C. Eat ice cream. Number 10. Listen to a conversation between a boy and a shop assistant. Listen for the answer to this question. Why does the boy want to buy colored pencils? Good morning. How can I help you? I want to buy some colored pencils, please. Colored pencils are on the shelf over there. There are also watercolor pencils and crayons for you to choose from. Many students buy them for their art projects. I just need colored pencils. 
I am taking part in a contest held by the Colored Pencil Magazine at my school. Oh, I see. I'll take this box, please. That's five dollars. Good luck with the contest. Thank you. Goodbye. Why does the boy want to buy colored pencils? A. For a class art project. B. For a school contest. C. For a school magazine. Number 11. Listen to a conversation between a boy and his mother. Listen for the answer to this question. How will the boy go home? Mom, can I go to Tim's house tomorrow after school to play? Tim's dad will pick us up from school and drive us to their house. Yes, that's fine. But do you know how to come back home from Tim's house? Yes, it's not far from our house. I can walk or I can take the bus. I think you should take the bus. It's going to be dark by the time you come home. Here's some money for the ticket. How will the boy go home? A. He will walk. B. He will take the bus. C. His mother will drive him. Number 12. Listen to a conversation between a boy and his mother. Listen for the answer to this question. What does the boy feel excited about? Mom, can you sign this form for me, please? What form is that, dear? It's for the school field trip next week. You know, the trip to the city museum I told you about yesterday? I have never been there, so I am very excited. Oh, I remember now. Your class is learning about the history of our city, which I have to say is very fascinating. Let me know if I can help with anything, dear. I have a few friends working there. Sure, Mom. What does the boy feel excited about? A. Studying history at school. B. Meeting his mom's friends. C. Visiting the city museum. Number 13. Listen to a conversation between a student and a librarian in the school library. Listen for the answer to this question. What will the boy do next? Hi, I'm Ms. Haynes, the new librarian. Can I help you? I'm looking for a good book to read. Well, we have lots of great books here in the library. What kinds of books do you like to read? We have books about science, famous people. Do you have books on animals? We sure do. They're right over here. What will the boy do next? A. Read a book about famous people. B. Go to science class. C. Look at a book about animals. Number 14. Listen to a conversation between a student and a librarian. Listen for the answer to this question. Why does the girl need a book? How may I help you today? I need a book for my English class. My teacher said I can choose any book I like. That's great. What kinds of books do you like to read? Well, travel books are interesting, and I really like books about people who lived a long time ago. I enjoy learning how people lived in the past. Well, then let's go over to this part of the library. There are many good books that you can choose from. Why does the girl need a book? A. To complete a history class project. B. 
to read on her next trip. C. To read for English class. Number 15. Listen to a conversation between a boy and a librarian. Listen for the answer to this question. What will the boy do next? What are you reading, Mike? Hi, Miss White. I'm doing research on kiwis. Oh, they're very interesting birds. Yes, their wings are very small, and they can't fly. But do you know that their eggs are huge? Really? Miss White, can you recommend me some other books about kiwis? I have to write a paper about them, and I don't think this book alone is enough. Oh, yes. Our library has a section of books dedicated to different bird species near the central window. I'm sure you can find good books about kiwis there. Oh, great. Thank you. What will the boy do next? A. Search for some more books. B. Learn about different bird species. C. Watch video clips about kiwis. Number 16. Listen to the phone message. Hi, Rachel. This is Lisa. I have a problem. I was working on an art project, and I ran out of glue. The project is due tomorrow, and I only have a little more work to do. Could you bring some glue to school tomorrow morning? Then I can quickly finish this in class and turn it in on time. Why did Lisa call? A. To get help with a school project. B. To ask Rachel to come to her house. C. To invite Rachel to an art museum. Number 17. Listen to the phone message. Hi Juan, this is Carlos. I'm going to the bicycle store tomorrow. The problem is, my bicycle is not working right. My dad knows someone at the store who can fix it. Do you want to come with us? Why is Carlos going to the bicycle store? A. To watch Juan work. B. To buy a new bicycle. C. To get his bicycle fixed. Number 18. Listen to the phone message. Hi, Emma. This is Jean from the music store. I'm calling to let you know that the guitar you ordered is here, but the problem is that it is red instead of black. Why don't you come to the store to take a look? It's a really beautiful guitar, and you may like it even more in red. I'll be at the store all afternoon if you want to come and try playing it. What does the woman say is a problem with the guitar? A. It is the wrong color. B. It is a different size. C. It has not arrived yet. Number 19. Listen to the phone message. Hello, this is Samira's social studies teacher. Samira, since you missed school today, I want to let you know what's happening in class tomorrow. We will spend the first half of class taking a test on Chapter 4 in your book. Then we will prepare for a trip to the museum next week. I hope we will see you tomorrow. What will the students do tomorrow? A. Go to the museum. B. Read a chapter. C. Take a test. 
Number 20. Listen to the phone message. Hello, this is Sophia's music teacher, Ms. Williams. I'm calling about the school's holiday bazaar that takes place on Tuesday, December 13th. Sophia and her band will perform at the event. The event starts at 5 p.m., but I would like her to be there at 4 p.m. for the final rehearsal. Could you please take her to school by that time? Thank you. Why did Sophia's teacher call? A. To invite Sophia's parents to attend a school event. B. To ask Sophia's parents to pick her up at school. C. To tell Sophia's parents of her rehearsal time. Number 21. Listen to the phone message. Hi Evelyn, this is John. I know that we agreed to meet at my house tomorrow and that my mom would drive us to the Happy Strings gift shop and back. The problem is, my mom has something coming up and she's only able to drive us there. Could you ask your mom to pick us up from the shop? Call me back and let me know. Why did John call? A. To tell Evelyn about a change in their plan. B. To remind Evelyn to come to her house. C. To ask Evelyn if she was able to meet. Number 22. Listen to the announcement. Attention class. To promote a drug and bullying free learning environment. Our school will be celebrating Red Ribbon Week from October 25 to 29. Each day, students will be encouraged to dress accordingly to a theme. For example, on Monday, you will dress like what you want to be when you grow up. For more information, please refer to the flyer I just gave you. What is the teacher talking about? A. An event at the school. B. Dress themes for students. C. Students' dream jobs. Listen to a story about Mary. Mary's mom works very hard in a factory but she still takes very good care of her. Every day after getting home from work, she makes dinner, tidies up the house and helps Mary with her homework. To show how much Mary loves her mother, Mary decided to cook dinner for her mom. Mary doesn't know a lot about cooking but she saw her mom doing it many times and noodles seems like an easy enough to make dish. First, Mary boiled water on the stove, then she added the noodles and the spices and set the timer for 15 minutes. She wanted the noodles to be properly cooked so she decided to add 10 more minutes to the timer. Mary was really excited. Today, when mom comes home, the noodles will be ready. We will sit down and enjoy some tasty noodles. Mary said to herself. Just before her mom got home, Mary turned off the stove and checked on the noodles. Unfortunately, the noodles were not like the kind her mom usually makes. They were more like a soup. Disappointed in herself, Mary broke down into tears. Her mom was surprised when she came home seeing how upset Mary was. After Mary told her what she had done, she put the noodles in two bowls and finished all of her noodles. Wow, these are very good noodles, she said. These are the best noodles in the world. You make a very good noodle soup, my dear. Mary's mom knew that Mary had overcooked the noodles. They were terrible. But that didn't matter. Her mom knew that Mary was trying to help. Later, she told Mary that she would teach her how to cook. Now answer the questions. Number 23. Why did Mary decide to help her mom? 
A. Because she knew a lot about cooking. B. Because her mom always takes care of her. C. Because noodles seemed easy to cook. Number 24. What is true about the noodles that Mary cooked? A. They were cooked too long. B. They were like the noodles her mom often cooks. C. They were very good noodle soup. Number 25. How did Mary's mom feel when eating her noodles? A. She was upset when tasting the noodles. B. She was surprised that Mary could cook. C. She was happy that Mary tried to help out. Number 26. What is Mary's mom going to do? A. Teach Mary how to cook noodles. B. Send Mary to a cooking class. C. Give Mary cooking lessons. Listen to a story about Jack and a blind man. Every day when Jack and his brother play outside, they often see a man walking by. He always travels with a brown stick because he cannot see very well. They are always amazed at how he never hits anything or gets hit by anyone while walking on busy streets. He knows exactly where to stop to wait for the traffic light turning green before crossing the street. He knows when to take a left or right turn or move to the side when people are coming towards him. Wow, it's amazing. He knows where and when to go and where and where to stop, Jack's brother said. One day, as the blind man was passing by, he heard Jack and his brother talking. He stopped and said, Hello, I heard you talking about me. Yes, we wonder how you know where to go and when to stop on busy streets. It's safer to stay indoors. Jack told him. The man smiled. I listen with my ears for every sound when I am out of my house. I use the stick to help me too. When my stick bumps into something, I know that I should stop and go around it. The man continued. Yes, it's safer to stay indoors. But I love to walk. I love the hot sun, the smell of flowers, the songs of birds. And most of all, I love to get some exercise. At first, I got all kinds of accidents but with practice. I now know how to get around most of the time. Jack told the man. Thank you. You are a good example for us to follow. You are very brave. We can see and walk. We will get some exercise too. Now answer the questions. Number 27. Where do Jack and his brother often see the blind man? A. Near the bus stop. B. At their grandma's garden. C. On the street near their house. Number 28. How can the blind man get around? A. He asks passers-by for help. B. He uses his ears and a stick. C. He learns from other blind people. Number 29. Why doesn't the blind man stay indoors? A. He isn't afraid of accidents. B. He wants to get fresh air. C. He enjoys listening to songs. Number 30. What will Jack probably do after talking with the man? A. He will work out more frequently. B. He will be an example for his brother to follow. C. 
He will try to become as brave as the old man. Listen to a teacher giving a science lesson. Last week, we had an interesting lesson about our solar system with lots of questions and answers and games for you to play. I'm sure you all enjoyed it. Today, we are going to learn about a planet called the Red Planet, Mars. Mars is the second smallest planet in the solar system after Mercury. It's about half the size of our planet. Mars is often called Red Planet because it looks red. Although it is red, this planet is not hot. In fact, Mars is pretty cold since it's further away from the sun. In winter on Mars, it can be much colder than even the coldest place on Earth. Temperatures can reach 200 Celsius degrees and even can fall down to as low as minus 140 Celsius degrees at its poles. You surely have to bring a lot of warm clothes when traveling to Mars one day. A day on Mars is 24 hours and 37 minutes, only a little bit longer than a day on our own planet. However, a year on Mars is almost twice as long, 687 Earth days. This is because it takes a lot longer than Earth to complete its circle around the Sun. What about life on Mars? Some people believe there might be some living on Mars. Books and movies also tell stories about aliens on Mars. Have you ever read about it? Now, robots are on Mars looking for life. They go around, take pictures, and send these pictures back to Earth. Sadly, no life has been discovered on Mars yet. But the robots keep looking. Now answer the questions. Number 31. How big is Mars? A. It's the smallest planet in the solar system. B. It's the fourth biggest planet in the solar system. C. It's smaller than the Earth. Number 32. Why is Mars called the Red Planet? A because its surface looks red. B. Because it is very hot on Mars. C. Because red aliens live there. Number 33. What is true about the robots on Mars? A. They have found aliens. B. They are now coming back to Earth. C. They send information back to people on Earth. Listen to a teacher talking in a history class. Okay class, today I want to tell you about an interesting topic. How prehistoric humans got fire under control. In modern times, making a fire is easy. Strike a match, then you have a nice hot flame. But it wasn't always that easy. Long long ago, people lived in a dark, cold world. They had nothing to cook food or keep warm. There were lots of natural fires in the prehistoric time. Lightning would strike the earth and cause fire. Prehistoric people might come across a burning tree that had been set aflame by lightning. Gradually, they realized that fire was good. The bottom line was how to control fire. Soon, they found out how to light a stick using a natural fire and keep it burning for a long time. They carried a burning coal from the fire and took it to the place where they wanted to make a new fire. They chose a man in their group to become the firekeeper. His job was to keep the fire burning. When the cavemen moved to a new place, the firekeeper would bring the hot coals and make a new fire. But nothing was perfect. Sometimes rain might come and wash the fire away. Finally, someone found out that they could make a fire by rubbing sticks together or by breaking special stones to set a fire. This meant that prehistoric men could make a fire whenever they wanted.
Human then had total control of fire and this changed the way they lived forever. Now answer the questions. Number 34. What is the topic of the talk? A. How prehistoric people controlled a fire. B. How prehistoric people made a fire. C. How prehistoric people fought with fire. Number 35. What might help prehistoric people keep a fire burning? A. Lightning. B. Hot coals. C. Lots of sticks. Number 36. When could prehistoric people put fire under total control? A. After they found some special stones. B. After they knew how made use of lightning. C. Only when they could make fire at any time. Listen to a teacher talking in a history class. Okay class, today I want to tell you about an interesting topic. How prehistoric humans got fire under control. In modern times, making a fire is easy. Strike a match, then you have a nice hot fire.